thank you for being here. And I'll be talking about the CNCF TAC runtime, uh, some of the activities that we've been uh, involved with, and some of the communities that we've been reaching out to. And this session is mostly about the audience to understand what we're doing and how they can help uh, with the TAG and the different groups within the TAG and also how they can maybe attract some folks who are interested in contributing. All right, so a little bit of what I'll be talking about today is some of the overview of the TAG and what it means, uh, the activities that we've been working on or we've been having, presentations and the different working groups within the TAG. We have the IOTH, the Batch System Initiative Working Group. We also have the Container Device Interface, WASM, Special Purpose Operating System, recently created, and we have an AI Cloud Native Working Group that we just created the charter, and we expect that to be approved in the next uh, two weeks. Then I'll touch on some future work and activities that we're planning to do and how you can get involved. So uh, I, went, I have a slide uh, on the charter with ChatGPT uh, at, that I showed at KubeCon Amsterdam, and I went to ChatGPT this time, and they didn't actually have a lot there. Uh, so it seems like they, they shut down their, some of their algorithms, so it doesn't say much about tag runtime, but I did actually went to Google Bard, and it came out with a better answer. So just for the fun of it, this is the answer. So it gives you a pretty good detailed answer of what the tag, I guess it looks at the GitHub repository and the website, and it provides pretty good information. So it's, it's good to uh, understand some of these things that are happening out there, and, and I think um, Tag Run Time is no different. And just for the fun of it, also I went to an image generation site, or generative AI image uh, logo creator, and it did actually create uh, three different versions of our, our logo. Um, it's not actually very close to what our actual logo is, but it, I mean, if you get, want to get started, it's, it's, it's something. Uh, but a lot of talk on generative AI. So, but what it, what it is uh, with Tag Runtime, it, it, it's there to help different users and communities uh, use the cloud native technologies when it comes to workloads. And these workloads can be batch type of workloads, like high performance type of workloads that run in multiple machines, or they could be latency sensitive workloads, for example, microservices. So all of these in the cloud native uh, context. We work with the TOC. We, TOC is the CNCF TOC, the Technical Oversight Committee. We have three TOC liaisons. We also have uh, chairs. I'm one of the co-chairs. And we also have tech leads, and the tech leads uh, help out with the different activities uh, that some of the chairs also do. But they tend to focus a little bit more on technology. We meet every first and third Thursday of every month, and uh, communication happens over email and Slack. So these are some of the sample projects uh, within the TAG runtime scope. Uh, as you can see, there's a variety of different projects in different areas. You have things like uh, Container D, there's a Container Shim. You have Harbor, which is a Container Image Registry. Uh, you have other projects like uh, Keda that helps you auto-scale workloads in an automated way with different metrics. Unicraft is another project that allows you to run unikernels. So a variety of different projects in different areas. And these different areas, uh, we def loosely define them into sc scope areas within the tag. And the general workload orchestration, where Keda and Kubernetes fit in, and you have the runtimes, the VMs, such as the container D, cryo shims. Uh, lately, there's been a lot of conversations around WASM, so the WASM runtimes also fall within the scope. Server serverless workloads is another area, and Knative is one example of those projects in, currently in the CNCF. Then another special area is the special purpose operating system area. So there are several projects there, like Bottle Rocket, Flagcar, 
recently, we just created a new uh, working group that will tackle some of these areas in special purpose operating systems. Another area that is super exciting is AI and machine learning. Uh, so we do have a lot of projects that fall within the, that scope, uh, such as uh, Qflow, uh, KSERV that allows you to serve machine learning models. And then obviously we have the, the areas of the different working groups uh, under the tag that described here that, and that I mentioned also previously. So now, so some of the activities and presentations uh, that we've had in the tag. So we do have a website. So there's updates on the website. So uh, some of our community members are, are posting information there. Uh, and also we request anybody in the community who has any feedback or information that would like to sh share or would like to uh, update on the website, they're free to do so and, and they can uh, create a pull request on the GitHub repo and make the change to the, to, the, to the tag runtime website. So one of the exciting things that we have going on now is the proposal to create a, a cloud native AI working group. There's been a lot of uh, excitement and hype, if you will, about AI and generative AI and LLMs. And we feel that we need to address address that area, so there's a lot of uh, community members that have gotten together and started creating a charter, and as a matter of fact, they already created a charter, and that's uh, being reviewed by the CNCF, TOC, and we expect that to uh, get started maybe in about two weeks from now. And some of the sample deliverables for this working group are things like white papers on cloud native AI, and we can have things like uh, the, the landscape uh, with all the cloud native projects and how they can help uh, enable machine learning ops and, and AI type of workloads. Uh, some surveys that they can send out to different community uh, members or, or organizations to understand more of the ecosystem Reviews and recommendations are another area that, that is interesting and that the working group is interested in tackling. Uh, also reports on new trends and AI industry that can help cloud native. So all of these in, in the context of cloud native and how AI can help cloud native and also how uh, cloud native can run uh, AI type of workloads. Another thing that we have going on is that we recently created the CNCF tax uh, GitHub organization. So Nikita uh, from the TOC created the, the pull request or the, or the issue to, to start this uh, initiative. And right now this is available to all the tags, but one of our container uh, or working groups uh, in the tags actually created a artifact that is actually hosted in, in this uh, organization. And this is just a home for uh, these working groups to, to have a place and, and to have some, something that can be shared across the community and, 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 and it can be actually used by several organizations or by, by, by different community members. This is a sample of presentations that we've had in, in this year and last year in, in different areas. We have the container tools, projects like Unicraft and Container D presented uh, and, and some others. In terms of workloads, uh, we had uh, QBetch graduation presentation. So the QBetch project uh, is pretty mature, so they wanted to uh, provide feedback to the community and, and they presented uh, in our meeting. And, other areas of presentations include like Kubernetes related projects that enhance the Kubernetes ecosystem like Keda, uh, Eraser, Kubestellar, and so forth. And finally, we had a, quite a few presentations also on operating systems and this will actually uh, be more uh, developed with, within the special purpose operating system working group that I'm gonna be talking about in a little bit. And 
just to give you an example, we had the Eraser project presented in our meetings. Uh, so Eraser is a project that uh, allows you to remove uh, non-running container images in, in a Kubernetes uh, clusters and in the nodes. I'm going backwards. Whoops. Sorry. And this is a, a demo of the project, so you can see uh, that you know, here we're creating a sample cluster with, with kind. And the idea here is that it'll, it, it'll create a, a service and, and uh, that brings a container image or, or create a deployment that brings in a container image and that container image uh, or deployment or daemon set will, will be delayed, deleted. In this case, it's the daemon set that it's getting created and and then it will be deleted. So you see it's coming up, this uh, demon set. And it's a job that is completed, and then the, 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 the image is not being used anymore. And you can see that the pods have been deleted, and right now it, it actually installs the control plane of Eraser. And the, the idea here is that after this is created, then the, there won't be any container images related to, to this specific uh, uh, daemon set that was created. So you can see the, and the cluster got, the, the image got deleted and it's not there anymore. So another project that I actually presented is the uh, flat carp project, which is a special purpose operating system just to run containers. It's a minimal distribution uh, of Linux. It helps uh, the whole ecosystem create this server that is more secure, more automated, um, and it provides this declarative uh, way of provisioning. And you can see that it's actually being used by a wide variety of different organizations, uh, commercial, Azure, AWS, VMware, et cetera. Unicraft is another project that presented. Um, it's a tool, a Go-based tool framework based on, uh, sorry, it's CraftKit, it, it, and it's presented, it presented in, and it's based on uh, Unicraft, and CraftKit it allows you to create unikernels, uh, so it's the tooling, tooling around unikernels uh, created for Unicraft. So it's Go-based, and, and, and as you can see, it's a CLI-based uh, system. And here we have a, just a sample demo of Hello World, and you can see that we update the, pack, the Craft uh, package update, we run, and we modify uh, main.c file to create that unikernel, which is with this command line. And it also has this craft file that defines how you define that unikernel. And right here, you, we're building the unikernel with craft build. And we just do a, a craft run, and you can see your hello world of your unikernel. So another project that we had was Keda, but they were interested in graduating, so they presented and they, they showed us their progress. Uh, so Keda allows you to automatically scale deployments up and down based on different scalers, and, and these scalers are integrations with different endpoints like Apache, Kafka, Messaging, or uh, AWS SQS, or uh, different CI CD systems that allows you to uh, spin up many workers to run your CI CD jobs. Uh, it, it actually provides uh, uh, over 55 scalers, so 55 different integration points. It can run on Linux or ARM. Uh, so the idea with this project is focusing on scaling your apps, but not the, the scaling internals. And, and so you can see the progress. Uh, of Keda towards graduation. And in V2, they had about 20 scalers, but when they went for incubation, there were up to 40 scalers, and now that they graduated, I think there are over 60 scalers. Uh, so 
the, it continues to grow over time. And as you can see, there's a lot of end users uh, using uh, the project. Uh, about 11% of Kubernetes users are using Kata. Azure Container Ops is using this project and in production. And AKS and OpenShift are offering a managed version of Kata. So another working group, shifting gears a little bit, uh, or, or now going into working groups, I would rather. Uh, so we, we cre recently created the WASM working group. So there's been a lot of uh, conversations around how WebAssembly can help cloud native and WebAssembly runtimes can <clears throat> be used to run cloud native workloads. And initially started with this PR, uh, trying to reach, reach out to the community members uh, who we're interested in the space, and we did actually get a lot of uh, interest. And, and we came up with a, a charter, a document, and, and folks started collaborating, and, and so they created the working group, and right now they're actually having meetings almost every week. Uh, these meetings are actually getting recorded, and getting posted on the CNCF tag runtime channel on YouTube. And there's a large lineup of different presentations. Uh, so we, we got a lot of participation, and it's a very exciting field. So the, the other working group that we recently created was a special purpose operating system working group. And there's a lot of interest in this space as well. So you can see that we had some presentations on October 5th, and we have a full lineup of different operating systems. And there's a lot of conversations about standardizing the APIs that talk to these different operating systems. So excited to see this uh, evolve, and, and we'll probably see a lot more the rest of this year and next year. And some of the things that we're, we're thinking about in this doing or addressing the special operating system working group, um, for example, st standards to run containers, uh, common APIs to manage these operating systems, speed up the OS provisioning for Kubernetes, and as, uh, different standards to run the containers or, or run like specific things like WebAssembly modules on, on top of these operating systems. So another, another working group is the IoT Edge working group. And the, and the, and the scope within this working group uh, includes many different projects that are about workloads at the edge, uh, for example, Cube Edge, uh, K3S, but now they're also uh, collaborating quite a bit with the Wasm Cloud and Wasm Edge communities or the Wasm ecosystem. And um, we'll see, continue to see pro uh, progress uh, as well in this working group. But this group, working group is not recent. It's been there for maybe about two, two and a half years. So there's a lot of uh, different deliverables that actually have come out from this working group. And one example is this Edge Native Applications Principles white paper. It basically talks about the differences between what it is to be cloud native and Edge Native. So with Edge Native, uh, there are some differences uh, with the applications where they need to be aware of the different constraints at the Edge. For example, they don't have a, uh, large amounts of CPU and memory. They have uh, access to less power. They they need to be more resilient to network outages or not being able to connect to a centralized location. They need to be more secure in terms of like having a lockdown mechanism if somebody breaks into the closet where they're actually stored. So a variety of different principles that they need to be taken into account and this uh, working group has actually created this white paper to, to educate the community. And now they're working on the next step of this working of this uh, white paper, and that's the application principles, uh, uh, application design behaviors white paper. And this is how you put these principles in practice. So this is currently in the works. We expect this to be published in the next maybe month or so. And that's quite a bit of work on what that we can say that's happening there in, in that working group. Another one is Batch System Initiative, and this one has been there for maybe two years, uh, but right now with the advent of AI, uh, there's a lot of in, uh, overlap with uh, some of these 
high performance type of workloads. So we might see collaboration with, with this working group and, and the cloud native AI working group. But right now they're working on a batch uh, landscape. Uh, as you can see, there are not that many projects. Um, there's a few, but uh, we expect this to continue growing. For example, there's one called Volcano that allows you to schedule batch jobs in Kubernetes and, and some other projects that allow you to manage uh, how these jobs get run across multiple uh, set of nodes in, in a Kubernetes fleet. Uh, but yeah, it's an exciting field and I think, uh, I think we'll see more, um, more tiles here popping up in the next few months. They're also working or have uh, created a white paper on batch scheduling tools and, and the features around batch uh, or details uh, that are looking at our scheduling policies, uh, preemption, you know, access to SDK and APIs, or, or of the different project characteristics within the space, within the batch space, like uh, whether they're open source, whether there's active de development, or whether th these projects can become a CNCF project or are already a CNCF project. And finally, we have the Container Orchestrated Devices Working Group. And this working group has been working on container uh, device uh, interface standard for um, all kinds of different container runtimes. So the idea is just to have support uh, in all of them across the board. And, and if you can see, uh, they've added support for container D, they added support for cryo, they've added uh, support for Potman and Singularity, and they also have uh, uh, vanilla Docker support in the works. They've also, these artifacts that they've created, which I mentioned earlier, uh, have been moved to the CNCS tax organization. Uh, this is, again, this is just not a, uh, specific to tag runtime, but uh, this is the first working group and group of people who've actually moved artifacts to this uh, or, uh, organization in the CNCF. And they're also converting uh, some of the tax uh, CNCF uh, that, that IO URLs uh, with package names. So what's next uh, for the tag runtime? And what, what are some of the things that, that we're looking at? So obviously we want to have more people participate in the tag. I think this is a common problem in a lot of the open source communities, but and this is no different in the tag runtime. Uh, some of the things that we can do is actually revisit some of the old projects, uh, and have them re present again and uh, provide an update or re-engage or uh, provide a, a advice on how they can improve or how they can pivot, maybe pivot in, in different ways if, if they don't have a lot of traction with contributors. Uh, keep on reaching to the different projects in the dif different areas. For example, cloud native AI uh, is, is happening, happening now. So there is, there's LLMs everywhere. So we'll continue to ride that hype. <laughs> uh, an uh, another project that is interesting is Open Tofu. So there, if you have actually followed some of the developments from HashiCorp and Terraform licensing, uh, their licensing was changed to business license licensing. So there was a group of folks in the open source community that decided to fork Terraform, and they've started this project called Open Tofu, which is an exact uh, fork of Terraform, but it would actually evolve into something else. So we plan to engage them as well. Uh, continue to look at uh, the variety of different runtimes that may may come up in the ecosystem. Wasm are the ones that are that come to mind, or some of the, some of the ones that are uh, used in IoT Edge. Also, continue looking at different tools in the Kubernetes uh, managing ecosystem. How how you manage multiple Kubernetes clusters as they grow, as as they become more of a challenge. And obviously, continue to have updates on uh, our Tiger Runtime website and have have these on, on a regular basis. 
yeah, with that, you know, just, um, um, you know, feel free to reach out and, you know, talk to me or talk to anybody in this room. Feel free to come, come up to me and happy to answer any questions. Thank you.